Yo. me into Angela. But I call her Yee. <laughs> With Angela Yee, I'm here, and my guy, my blogger friend, he's a journalist for real. B dot is here with me today. B -Dot. I'm back. <laughs> You're back, baby. I thought you kicked me off the island. Why would I do that? I don't know. It's been a while. Good to see you, Ange. Good to see you too, B dot. We had an active weekend, so I know there's a lot to discuss today. Oh yeah. A lot of ver uh, like literal fights, <laughs> and then some rap battles. On and off wax. R&B slash rap battles, a lot of people trending. So we'll discuss all of that today. Plus, we have Anaya joining us. She has a new project out. Uh, it came out on Friday. Wait, there's more. You know her for sampling for um, Fantasia for her song, For the Streets. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. I like when people sing real things like that. All right, but let's get into the show with some love and positivity. Let's shine a light before we get into all these battles. 800-292-5150. Call us up. Let us know who you want to spread some love to who do you want to shine a light on its way up i'm a shine i'm, I'm a shine turn your lights on y'all turn your lights on spreading love to those who are doing greatness shine a light on them shine a light on them it's time to shine a light on them all right, it's way up on a Monday, and it's time to spread some love, because we need it, right? Always. b -Dot is here, guest hosting. My name hosting. is b -Dot. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's shine a light today on Brown Girl Jane. Okay. I actually have this perfume. It's the first black woman-owned fine fragrance that's going to be in Sephora. It's in Sephora now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so shout out to them. Um, this brand actually is like a wellness brand, but it's the first, like I said, black woman owned fine fragrance. And, um, according to the founders, they said coupling Sephora's knowledge with our innovation and disruption is, I think, a recipe for success at retail. And my girl, Ty Bochamp, you know, uh, Ty Bochamp, she's one of the founders of that too. She's the chief brand officer for the for brown girl jane she said after i spray a fragrance i ask people what do you feel mm. with carnival the words are exuberant joyful excited festive and celebrated for yourself they actually won a one hundred thousand dollar cash prize and a year-long mentorship for the 15 percent pledge gala in los angeles they won that sephora beauty grant so oh, that's what's up they're in there now so mm -hmm. everybody go and support brown girl jane inside of sephora is isn't it, that dope is it made for a man you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you are my brown girl, Jane. I am a brown girl, All right, Jane. well, who do you guys want to spread some love to and shine a light on? 800-292-5150. Prince Cree, who do you want to shine a light on? I want to shine a light on myself. Sometimes, okay. you know, I don't give myself enough credit Woo -woo. in the things that I do because I don't look for the accolades as a person out there speaking and advocating against mental health, suicide prevention. I have a nonprofit called Roadshow Alliance. Mm -hmm. for suicide prevention. I have a book um, that's geared towards the projects where we were untreated with ADHD, depression, anxiety, and suicide ideation. So I want to shine a light on me. My book just came out, and I'm having so, uh, such a great response with people coming back and saying how it's changing their lives. Ooh, okay. And Angela Yee, I'm proud of you, girl. I'm proud of you. I was a big fan on the club. Now I'm a big fan now. Keep uh, doing what you're doing for me. Well, thank you, Prince Cree. I appreciate that. And yes, yeah, sometimes you do have to look back and be like, I'm doing a lot and I'm proud of myself for all the accomplishments that I have and for how I'm helping other people. I think that's the real Indeed. test, right? When you're a servant for other people and doing things that actually benefits others. That's the best feeling. Indeed. Indeed. How can people find you, Indeed. Prince Cree? Instagram at the creative underscore prince. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate you, sister. Thank you. I appreciate you too. God Bye. bless. All right. Well, that was Shine a Light. And when we come back, oh my God, over the weekend, I went to go see Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. I know you watched B Dot. Oh, yeah. I was there. And we'll talk about all of the aftermath from that fight. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. It's from industry shade to all the gossip. Out, out. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Talk to all right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee and B-Dot is here. My name is B-Dot. I'm here. <laughs> all right, and let's get into some yee tea. First up, let's talk about Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia at the Barclays. Man. Yes, and, you know, I was in the building. You know, Devin Haney was up here a couple of times before this fight. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he did lose to Ryan Garcia. He lost pretty badly. You know, he got knocked down three times. Yep. One judge, though, did have it as a tie, 112-112 <laughs> each. And people were discussing why, though, because Devin Haney did win, and he was a more accurate puncher, so he landed more punches. But Ryan Garcia's punches were a lot harder, and he did catch him with that left hook, which is what he's known for. Mm -hmm. And and Devin Haney himself said he couldn't avoid that. Here's what Devin Haney had to say in the ring right after the fight. 
Allah is a perfect planner. Uh, I'm disappointed with my performance, but I showed that I was that I was a you know a true champion and that um I could fight after being knocked down and being hurt. I fell asleep on a, on the left hook. We trained we trained for it, but I got in there and I, and, and I fell asleep. Uh, and, and he caught me with it. He didn't make weight, so I'm still I'm I'm, I'm still the champion, and uh, we can run it back. All right, and like you said, he, you know, Ryan Garcia didn't make weight, so he doesn't get that belt. Right. It wasn't uh, even a title fight. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, and they also had the opportunity to not do the fight at all because part of the contract is you have to make weight, and he didn't, but they decided to renegotiate mm -hmm. that contract and still go ahead and have the fight. Now, here's what Ryan Garcia had to say after that. Real is going on in the world. Open your eyes. No kids being hurt. Nobody caring. Everybody looking at it like, oh, he's just crazy. It's a conspiracy. It's this, it's that. At the end of the day, it's real. And I, I out there put that my reputation on the line, had everybody thinking I was crazy. Back in the day, he's the crazy one now. Right. I walked through the fire and still held it down and still beat Devin Haney and still drink every day and still beat him. Wow. Mm -hmm. He was faking the funk. Yeah, and he did, by the way, also confirm that he bet $2 million on himself Damn. for the fight and won $12 million is what he claims. Mm. And he said, um, bet on yourself on top of what we made eating good, about $50 million, probably more in one night, not too shabby. Well, I lost 50 betting on Devin, so uh, he needed to cut me off some of that PC, man. Yeah, I wonder what that's like if you act like you're mentally unstable and doing all of those things and then bet on yourself because you end up coming in as the underdog mm. and then you know, win for that. So, yes, like we said, Devin Haney was the more accurate puncher, but Ryan Garcia definitely had more impact with his punches. And here's what Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father, had to say on live the day after the fight. We turned losses into lessons and turned them into blessings. I did always say that I believe that Ryan Garcia was a good fighter. I think he's an even better TikToker or whatever because he fooled you guys into thinking that he was crazy. I knew that he wasn't crazy. It was a good fight. Definitely want a rematch. All right, so it looks like a rematch may be happening because both fighters are calling for that. Right. So we shall see. We shall see. I Maybe think that, a lot of people will watch that fight. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it'll be for the belt at that point. And everybody talks about how Javante Davis did beat uh, Ryan Garcia previously and was able to avoid those those left hooks. So mm. we'll see what happens. And that is your um, Yeti. And when we come back, we have about last night. That's part of what I did over the weekend. And you'll tell us what you did this weekend too, B-Dot. Yes. When we come back, about last night, it's way up. So, about last night, here's how it went down. All right, it's Way Up. I'm Angela Yee. My guy B-Dot is here. My name's B-Dot. I'm here. And it's about last night time. Now, I told you guys, I went to the fight over the weekend at the Barclays. Yep. Um, and it was definitely a good time. It I would tell you, it was sold out. Yeah. Um, Mike Tyson was there. Roy Jones Jr. was there. I saw Joey Badass. ASAP Ferg, Fabio Foreign. I think Fabio Foreign has some type of scuffle outside. <laughs> I saw that online. I didn't see that in person. Okay. Um, but yeah, shout out to everybody who was at the fight. It was amazing. Clarissa Shields. I saw, and then I saw a lot of people were there who I didn't know were there mm. until after I left. And then I saw it on Instagram. I was there in spirit. Yeah, Top Dog was there. Um, Seven Streeter. I didn't wow. know she was there and was in town and didn't tell me. So shout out to her for being at the fight. But um, my girl Ingrid, I was with her and she actually owns I Best Wine. So yes. I also at my coffee shop had an event uh, at my coffee shop for that because guess what? We got our liquor license. Hey, at make my some coffee noise for shop. that. So that is a huge deal for us. So shout out to everybody at Coffee Uplifts People. We haven't implemented anything yet, but the plan moving forward is um, to make sure it's a total vibe. Nice. At my coffee shop. So that's what I did. What about you, B Dot? Um, yesterday I didn't do anything, but uh, I streamed the fight on bootleg off the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And um, then I also caught, caught Larry June at Terminal 5. Yeah, it was a smoked out oh, 420 nice. event. So I caught Larry June doing the same. I didn't know you smoke. No, I don't. Okay. Last time I smoked, you remember what happened, Angela? Oh, it didn't go well. It did not go well. It was New Year's and you missed everything. Yes. We were actually at a bowling alley, Brooklyn Bowl. <laughs> I think with Q-Tip was was Q-Tip DJ. I think he was DJing. Who, by the way, is now in the Hall of Fame. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Q-Tip. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that later. Okay. Yeah. So you don't smoke anymore. Yeah, I didn't. But everybody else around me was fried. So I, you know, I caught Larry June. Alchemist came out. You know, helped them out. So it was a good time. Okay, 
All right, we love it. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, like you said, it was 420. Uh, well, anyway, when we come back, that was about last night. Tell us a secret. 800 292 5150 is the number. Call us up. We let you stay anonymous. We want you to stay anonymous, but we want you to feel free to tell us anything. We're not going to judge you. Mm. Tell us a secret. 800 292 5150. B Dot's going to forget anyway because he smoked that one time. <laughs> he hasn't been the same si- since. It's all your fault. 800 292 5150. Tell us a secret. It's way up. Yo. Way up. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's a Monday. And you know what that means. Y'all had some secrets over the weekend. B-Dot is here. Yes, I what am. Is B-Dot. I know that's right. B-Dot can also vouch that these secrets are real. For people that think these are staged, people really call in. Unbelievable. Unbelievably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 800-292-5150. Call us up and tell us a secret. Hello, anonymous caller. What's your secret? So, I've been friends with this girl. Me and her were friends, just me and her, for like three years. And then she met her her now boyfriend, which actually is her baby daddy. They just had a baby about four or five months ago. I had no interest in this man, still don't. And he never hit on me until I lost my job. And I had asked them to borrow some money. I asked my friend, her, mm-hmm. to borrow some money. He ended up calling me one day and offering me the money that I needed, but he wanted to smell my feet. He wanted to do what? feet stuff. And yeah, that was my first time ever doing anything like that. But I needed the money to pay my rent and I did it tell my friends. Wow. And it's been like three months now. I haven't told her and he still does it. Wow. Well, how much does he send you? Like $300. And is he still smelling your feet? <laughs> yeah, he just like, I mean, he likes to massage them and smell them. Mm-hmm. And I just have pretty toes like when I get them done they look like skittles like wow. they are a, okay, I've like always skittles. got compliments even the Chinese ladies give me compliments on my feet like they just <laughs> you want to taste the rainbow are you are you going to do an OnlyFans for your feet so I try to I, I actually <laughs> I mean it only makes sense I should it does you want me to like... manage you <laughs> yes girl I need some help uh, like... you'll be little foot and Angela could be big foot <laughs> <laughs> yeah what size shoe you have <laughs> A six and a half. Oh, yeah, she got little feet. Okay. All right, well, thank you for calling and and sharing that secret. All right, thank you, Angela. (laughs) This little piggy went to market. (laughs) What's up, Anonymous Caller? How are you? I be doing. You want to tell me and beat out a secret? Yes. Tell us. I just wanted to apologize to my baby mom. I had intercourse with her mom before her. Wait, 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 hold on. You had sex with your baby mom's mother before her? Yes, but I didn't know. Wow. What is what is her mom saying now when she sees you? Nah, she just give me that look like, you know what I'm saying? And we still like said that. Wow, you're a true mother <laughs> effer. Would you do it again? Um Wow. Like blood, and she get it from her mom. So you like you still like the mom? Yeah, it was fun. Can well, you imagine so they have a kid, she has a, he has a kid right. with her and if he had a kid with the mom, that's fire. That is not fire. Oh my God! You would be your own child's grandfather. <laughs> I ain't never heard that though. Is the condom on or off at this point? Oh, that's off. I don't wear no condom. Oh my God! Oh, gosh. how dare you ask such a question? <laughs> Silly it's, me. That's your mother-in-law <laughs> almost. I just wanted to get that off my chest. All right, yeah, we're not judging, but thank you for calling. Absolutely. Well, maybe a little. Now he's trying to to make the news. <laughs> All right, well, that is your Tell Us a Secret, you guys. Sheesh. Y'all wild. Vida is appalled. I am uh, mortified. <laughs> but also not judging. All right, well, 800-292-5150 in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, Quavo versus Chris Brown. This has been going on for so long, but now Chris Brown has put out a diss track. Yes. I never thought I'd see this day. <laughs> it's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Come and get the tea. Woo, it's way up, and there is some tea today, B-Dot. You ready? It's piping. It's B-Dot. Yes, I'm ready. And, and B-Dot will pick a side, all right? So let's see what that is for Yee T. <laughs> uh, Chris Brown versus Quavo. Mm. You know, the two of them haven't gotten along for quite some years. Yeah, it's a long history. It's a long history, but then people thought they made up in January. They were at Paris Fashion Week. They were sitting next to each other. But then Chris Brown let people know, F all that growth-ish, and we're not finna fumble my bag for little N-words. So mm. he was saying he couldn't pick who he sat next to right all right well things are still happening now Quavo did take some shots at Chris Brown on the song tender and mm. here's what he had to say all right well Chris Brown then took some light shots back at him on freak on his 1111 deluxe album 
Okay, now we open my hope this ain't going all right. It wasn't too crazy. Right. Right. Just some little light shots. But now he took some heavier ones. And this song is called Weakest Link. Mm. This is Chris Brown. It's really a whole diss song at Quavo. And here is how he started it off with this voicemail that is allegedly from Quavo. Hey, Chris. I don't want no issues, bro. I don't want no smoke. I don't want fights. I don't want to do nothing, bro. Like, please, bro. Please, bro. Wow. Wow. The cover's crazy, too. We got him eating a hot dog. <laughs> a glizzy? A glizzy. Wow. All right. <laughs> and then um, after that, it, it looks like Chris Brown had some things to say about Quavo's ex-girlfriend, Saweetie. Here's what he said. Mm. Quavo talking like he a thug. You can do a different dread. Can't wait to see the day that you back up all of that shit you said. What's all that ball? This shit you talking, you ain't no hunch. You the weakest link out of your clique. Let's keep it a hundo. You lost my ex. Well, that's cool. I don't give no fuck. Because I fucked your ex when you were still with a bitch. I'm up, little They say revenge is sweet. Now think about that shit. Don't let that line go over your head. I might just sing about that shit. Wow. Imagine you one of these ladies just sitting at home minding your business. Maybe you're at the gym working out and then this happens and your men just start blowing up and you're like, I have nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, well, women always are in the middle of a, a R&B beef or a rap beef for that matter. Mm hmm. So and, you know, some of these uh, little allegations that there might be some tea that she also spilled mm. during that time that Saweetie sp allegedly, according to this song. Now, here's what else Chris Brown had to say on Weakest Link as far as the domestic violence allegations and things. I put Amigo on a ventilator. Stop talking about beating girls. You was beating snips on the elevator. We seen the taste. That's devastating. You doing bad. You was in your music trash. Fashion week, they set me next to your lame ass. I was truly mad. All I kept thinking about was breaking your face, but I gave you a pass. You're lucky I ain't want to fuck the money up. Boy, I would have broke you in half. Quick. Mm. Wow. Well, first of all, you know, very mature, both of them to sit next to each other, <laughs> knowing they can't stand each other. How awkward is that? Yeah, that, that had to be really awkward. All right. And then this. Now, listen, you and I had a conversation about this. I feel like this is you say nothing is too far in rap beef. Yes. I feel like this was kind of inappropriate, especially if you're trying to pay homage to take off. This is, you know, let's leave that alone because he's no longer with us. But here's what he said. R.I.P. Take off. He the only real one that got true respect. Crazy how when he died, everybody really wished it was you instead. Woo! Ouch. Damn. Come on. All's fair in love and hip hop, right? That hurt my heart. <laughs> hurt and you? I get it. You know, it's a diss song. I'm a, I'm a woman. I'm an empath, and I definitely was like, all right, I don't know. I wouldn't have brought that up. Right. Everything else. And you know what? As a woman, too, I also don't like bringing other women into the beef. Like some private things that happen behind the scenes, but. Beef is beef, I guess, and there's nothing I could could really say about that. But you know, yeah, this one is, seems to I be guess well it's supposed done. To make me feel uncomfortable. It's a rap beef, it's, you know. It's a rap beef. It's a diss record. All right, well, Sweetie is um, taking it well because she actually may go in and write rewrite some of her verses. She's gonna she be said, there for a while. Me, let me go rewrite these nanny verses. She has a new <laughs> single that she's been teasing, and so maybe she's gonna have something to say about that. But she seems unbothered. And what else can you do? You yeah, can't do nothing. Yeah, what happens, happens. All right, well, that is so far some of your updates. I'm sure there's going to be more. Oh, yeah, for sure. That are coming. And we do got to talk about Drake later on in Yee But in the meantime, I mean, how appropriate. Let's play some Chris Brown before we get into <laughs> Under the Radar. It's way up. I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. B Dot is here with me. My name is B Dot. Thanks for having me. Under the radar, today's a big day because Trump's trial starts today. He's facing 34 counts of falsifying business records related to the hush money payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. And so we are waiting to see what those opening statements are today. All right. All right. And today's also Earth Day. Hey. Yes. Yeah, so experts are addressing America's climate change action. This is an annual opportunity for citizens, experts and lawmakers to celebrate the planet, but also examine our impact on the changing environment. I tell you, I did get solar panels in my house. Okay, Captain Planet. I mean, I want to try to figure out ways I can do things that'll be beneficial. I think if everybody does that, um, you know, it can be helpful. I do want to get an electric vehicle, but it's hard in New York yeah, to we, find the charging stations. We're plug it at. Exactly. My brother has an electric vehicle. Mm. So he's always like, oh, I can't come right now. I got to charge my car. I got to charge cars. my car. Yeah. So there, but climate experts are warning that there's going to be larger and more severe weather because of the effects of climate change. And we've seen that happening. You know how they'll be like, this was the hottest 
you know, winter ever on record and all kinds of things. So mm-hmm. we got to make sure that we start thinking about that. We should have been thinking about that collectively. Yes. All right. And David Beckham is suing Mark Wahlberg for $10 million. That's, that's not a good vibration. Right. They're saying that uh, the, that... David Beckham's DB Ventures claims that he was duped by Mark Wahlberg. He said he lost $10 million out of pocket when stocks that he would promise weren't given to him until the stock prices plummeted. And that's for uh, this company, F45 Training. So he has a 36% interest in it, and he's the chief branding officer Mm. um, for that. Mark Wahlberg is. And I guess um, Beckham has appeared in some of the social media posts promoting the brand. Those posts have since been deleted, and Mark Wahlberg wants them to dismiss the case and say that the the claims of fraudulent conduct are baseless. Wow. Yes. David Beckham could just get Chris Brown to write him a diss track. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> Another beef. Another this beef, beef all around the world this weekend. All right. Well, that is Pulse. your Under the Radar. Now, you know, we got the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. <laughs> and we have Anaya joining us. Her new project, Wait, There's More, is out. We love that flip. That sh- she did a Fantasia yeah. song. Um, yeah, for the streets. All right. So let's party on a Monday. Let's get our energy up, people. Let's Do go. It. It's Way Up. Way Up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. Way up. It's Angela Yee. And B dot's here for some Yee Tea. I'm here. This is this is your realm right here. We're gonna get into all of this. Drake, Kendrick Lamar, Kanye, all of these things. Mm. Uh, but first, before we get into the tomfoolery, shout out to everybody who got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That includes the legendary Tribe Called Quest. Yes. The legendary Mary J. Blige. Please. The legendary Cool in the Gang. And the legendary Dion Warwick. Shout out to all of them for being inducted amongst the others. Awesome. Well deserved. Yes, well deserved. All right, now let's get into the tomfoolery. So <laughs> Drake has put out a tailor-made freestyle diss track. Yes. This was a little different because he used AI to summon Tupac as well as Snoop Dogg <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, for the song. What did you think of it? I liked it. it. You did? I liked it. Loved it. You loved it? Yes. What did you love about it? I love the fact it was a little bit creative. It was unexpected, and I just love the fact that he put it on a social platform so everyone could get... It was just dope. I think the idea of it was a good idea, using AI, because everybody was thinking AI tracks and all of this, and why not do that? But the song in particular... Was did it you for think, you? I don't know. All right, well, let's hear some of okay. it right now. Here is some of Taylor Made. Here is uh, where he summoned Tupac. Kendrick, we need ya. The West Coast savior. Hey, Grady, your name is some hip hop history. If you deal with this viciously, you seem a little nervous about all the publicity. Canadian lights get dark. We need to know the baby West Coast victory, man. Call him a to me. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now here is, and, and you know, we, we're not going to play Snoop right now, right. but Snoop did also weigh in. Like, they did what? But see, a lot of people were upset because they used AI for mm-hmm. Tupac and Snoop, but I'm like, this thing has been done before, sort of. Right. Like, I remember um, on the Roots Project, uh, The Tipping Point, mm-hmm. and uh, the song Boom, Black Thought rap like Big Daddy Kane and Coogee rap. People thought that was actually them, but it was just Black Thought rapping in their same cadence and voice. Right, right. It wasn't AI at that time. I think it's also because it's Drake and... Yeah. The topic of it, using a, a West Coast rapper to go... Well, Tupac was really from... But, you know, we right. consider him that. And um, to go at... Kendrick, I think, was an issue too, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like the eight mile effect. He's just using other people to talk about himself. I remember Fifty Cent did it when he was dissing Game um, on that on that diss. Uh, still not not rich, still lying back in the day. So things like that have been done. All right, well, here's Drake on the Taylor May freestyle. I love it when you n- talk loose like I'm not in the room. Since like that, your tone changed a little. You not as enthused. How are you not in the booth? It feel like you kind of removed. You trying to let it die down? Nah, nah. And people keep saying that Kendrick does have something ready. Mm. Have you heard that? I haven't heard it. I just know but that. But have you heard that that people have been saying? Yeah, that yeah I've heard the rumors. Okay. I just know that this is an angry Canadian. Right, and he basically also says that Kendrick is waiting for Taylor Swift's, uh, you know, to die down from her Tortured Poets album that yeah. just came out that did in- insane numbers. Yeah, it's gonna run the charts. All right, well, in addition to that, Kanye has inserted himself into all of the drama. Not Hey, come on. (laughs) Sorry. Um, And he uh, is on the Like That remix, and here's what that sounds like. It's a rap, niggas. Where's Lucien? Serve your master, niggas. You caught a little bag for your masters, didn't you? Lifetime deal, like a bad for niggas. Y'all so out of sight, out of mind. 
I can't even think of a Drake line. Play J. Cole, get the so dry. Play the bitch back 130 times. All right, Lucian. Mm. Lucian Grange. Yes. Who's that for people who are listening in? Maybe? He's the boss of all bosses. He runs uh, Universal Music. All right. Well, let's actually uh, skip over to Kanye talking about who Lucian is while he was on Justin the Boys, the Download podcast. Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy named so, Lucian. So all of his streams and the number ones <laughs> is controlled by someone named Lucian. Or well, Lucian work for people who control the banks in Africa. Mm. Okay. Is I'm this... <laughs> you got a rich baby daddy. I'm a middle class Hands baby on daddy. Your knees. But Kanye also said that Future was the person that called him to actually do this remix. Here's what he said. Well, wow. called me. I went to the studio, laid that, and then we, um, you know, went through the, you know, the creative process, adding the chords, and called the hooligans, called them out in London to get on a joint. You know, everybody was very, very excited about the elimination of Drake. Not excited. We was energized. The em elimination of Drake. He's trying to stage, Can this happen? You're trying to stage like a Canadian coup against Drake, <laughs> man. What's going on? Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, that is your Yeetie. So much more we could talk about. Jeez. But remember when it was all good? When it was Future, Drake, Thames, Wait For You, the song that we played nonstop that we're going to play right now, right before we get into Ask Ye, 800-292-5150. Here's some Future, Drake, and Thames. Let's get it. Hey, everybody, exes. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know, you should know. This is Ask Ye. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And my guy, journalist extraordinaire, B-Dot, is here with me today. Yes, I am. All right. And it's time for Ask Yee, 800-292-5150. And today we have Maria on the line. What's up, Maria? Hi. Hey, girl. Hey. So um, what is your question today? My boyfriend taught me how to bet on sports. And I made a crazy bet over the weekend for the mm -hmm. fight. Okay. And I lost a thousand dollars, and ouch. I'm afraid to tell him. I don't know how to tell him that I messed up. <laughs> well, the thing about betting is you're not going to always win. And he did teach you how to bet. And anybody who thinks and bets that you're always going to win, I mean, it's just yeah. the fact is that I'm sure he's lost sometimes. But he also told me that when I'm learning still, I should bet small so I don't lose big. I mean, you need like a sports betting apprenticeship. I know, right? <laughs> You're learning, and guess what? This was a good lesson. <laughs> and you, and you know what? Sometimes we just got to be like, "You were right, Bay." Okay, I Th guess telling him he's right is yeah, probably the best. Choice. That is the best thing to do. You, you have to be like, "Look, baby, you was right. I messed up." And should I do something nice to balance it out? I have, I got a thousand different things you could do, <laughs> but I, you know, this is a family show. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Don't you go and get addicted either. We don't want you to have no gambling problem after this. Oh my gosh, no. I learned my lesson this time. And all you could do right now, because it was your money you lost, right? Not his. It uh, was a little bit of his. That's why it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, hopefully if your man is a good sport, he will think it's funny too, as long as you're apologetic and you can apologize. Because sometimes we have to be like, you clearly know more than me. I should have listened. Yeah. So, you know, you got this. He's so, never going to let it down. Yeah, he's going to bring it up a lot. You got to be able to, to kind of just say, I was wrong. You were right. And maybe you do something nice for him. Maybe that's, you know, take him to dinner and take him to dinner someplace cheap because you're a little broke right now. <laughs> Yeah, I got to be nice without spending any more money. Yes, you got to be nice. So maybe it's going to uh, be ordering in or yeah. <laughs> making some food at home. You should get him a card, too. Nobody does that anymore. Go to the store, get a card, a funny card, and write inside what happened and, and let him mm, know. That's good. Yeah, that's cute and funny. I got it. I got it. It would be like roses are red, violets are blue. I blew your money, but I still love you. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, just like the money I blew. Not doing what you told me to do. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hallmark, I like us, man. All right, all right. Watch out, Hallmark. <laughs> no, but honestly, do something cute like that and admitting that you're wrong sometimes. It is what it is. Learn my lesson. And don't you call okay. back here next week, talk about you placed another bet <laughs> and lost. I won't. Okay. You. All right, thank you. Good luck, okay? 
Thank you. No problem. She won't do that no more. Oh, man. Devin Haney owes us some money. Yeah, man. I lost 50. I don't feel that bad anymore. Uh, well, shout out to Devin Haney, though. <laughs> All right. Well, 800-292-5150. In case you couldn't get through for Ask you, you can always leave a message. We'll answer your questions that way. And when we come back, we have Anaya joining us. You know she has a new album out, Wait, There's More. But she's just an amazing person to talk to. You're going to love her story. She's been through a lot, and she's hilarious but also at the same time just i think i feel really connected to her because of how she wears her emotions on her sleeve it's way up we're about to do this yeah yo more way up with angela yee on now you know, you know, who, it know who it is you know who it is What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's a celebration. We got Anaya here. Congratulations. What's up, girl? Thank you. The album is out right now. Wait, there's more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because first of all, I'm excited that you're here. Love your spirit. Thank love you your music. Me, Angela. I'm excited to be here. You know, girl. we got a toast to this. Cheers. Cheers to Wait, There's More. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Now, I see the ring on the finger. Mm. So, you see that? I see that. So that's an engagement ring we saw a few months ago. There was an actual engagement that went viral. Everybody said, congratulations. Is that what that is? So can we celebrate and toast to that, too? Is that what that is? Is that an engagement ring? Wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> I'm going to toast to that now. But honestly, you got to be having like the best time right now. Mm-hmm. You have two children, right? I do. You do and so- a bonus baby. Ooh, and then for you being at home with your man. Mm-hmm. is he? He's Jamaican? He is, girl. Yeah, oh, should I say fiance? We gotta get used to saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the video, okay, with your fiance. I've so then, got a good one, so. I'm all right, well then, him. let's talk about some of these songs in that case, because mm-hmm. you got to channel some other energies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, even right now, hot sauce. I know this feeling. Tell your mama I don't like her neither. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes when guys are doing you dirty, the family knows. The mama be knowing. The mama know when she done raised the ain't child. And a lot of the times when she also knows when her son has done something wrong and he go running back home, she'll be on his side like, well, he's just not ready. And he 35. What you mean? He ain't ready. Right. Listen, so you have a 13 year old boy. <laughs> I do. Right. Mm-hmm. So you always going to go to bat for your son, no matter who he's dating, though. Right. You're going to. True. However, I teach. I'm for real. I teach. I feel you on that. But I teach my boys accountability. Right now, we're talking to Anaya. She's got her debut album. Wait, there's more out right now. Now, how do you explain to your um, fiance when he listens to your music and then y'all got to have conversations? Because that is like your diary. Yeah, it's funny that you ask that because he will not watch Sugar Daddy video to this day. Really? He won't watch it. He hates the song. He don't want to hear it. (laughs) Like, first of all, he had no idea who I was when we met. Mm hmm. That's just beautiful in itself because there's no, you know, suspicion of ulterior motive or anything like that. How very, did you guys territorial? Meet? We met at my baby daddy house. And I, I love this. <laughs> I... <laughs> Please continue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me have some more. They're not friends, first of all. Let's okay. make that very clear. <laughs> they were not friends. This ain't no Porsche Fallon situation. <laughs> it was a, a kickback. And I went over there. I had just did like a 12-hour session at the studio. Went to go pick up my son. Mm-hmm. And his uncle was like, now nah, you come kick it. We having a little, you know, I was like, oh, I don't like y'all like that. I'm trying to get my son and, and bounce, you know. And it was just one of those situations where friends of friends of friends invited other friends. And okay. as I was leaving the party, Jay was walking into the party. Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how we met. Did you turn back around? Like I, said, I was like, oh, I was like, I stay for a little bit, a little bit longer. I ain't never seen you around here before. I had to make sure that there was no friendship or any, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Respectfully. Between him and, yeah. And then a couple of days after that, he pursued me and was asking for my number and things like that. And I didn't want to give it to him because I was just like, it's still a little too close for comfort, you know. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, man, look, I don't care about none of that. <laughs> then I ain't kin to them. Y'all been separated for a long. Y'all ain't been together for, for over five years. So right. I let him take me out on a date. And I on the first night and now we getting married. <laughs> can happen for you. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Where was the first date? And I don't regret it. At his house. You shouldn't regret it. it was, In his oh, living room. So you didn't mind going to his... So y'all must have really been like having a vibe girl. to even feel comfortable to go to somebody's house on the first date. Nasty, girl. <laughs> I truly believe that the first time we saw each other, it was it was love at first sight. Wow. I believe And it. he feels the same way. Absolutely. I'm head over heels madly in love. And he is too. All right, Anaya is here. You know her single that samples Fantasia for the streets. Her album, Wait There's More, is out now. And we have more with her when we come back. It's way up. Yeah. Yo. More-
called Way Up with Angela Yee on now. You know who it is. You know who it is. What's up is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Anaya is here. You've seen her on the Miss Pat show. You've heard her music. Her album, Wait There's More, is out right now. Now, what about <laughs> when um, it went viral that you got engaged in November? Mm-hmm. That wasn't you that put it up. Somebody posted no, that. I didn't. Somebody else did. And everybody was like, congratulations. That's amazing. You deserve it. So mm-hmm. on and so forth. But mm-hmm. was that a moment that you didn't want people to... It was so beautiful and sacred and special and I just couldn't believe that God had finally allowed me to meet my husband Mm -hmm. that I I wanted to soak that up privately wasn't ready to share it but it's It's out there there. right now we're talking to Anaya she's got her debut album Wait There's More out right now how did you know that you were uh, that you had postpartum girl because (laughs) I I wasn't me Cause some people don't know, like they're suffering from it and have no idea what's wrong. Oh, I knew, I knew I was outside of myself, so I could tell that, you know, something was wrong. It's a form of dep- it's depression. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a form of depression. I felt completely consumed by motherhood. I couldn't get back to me. I couldn't. I couldn't write any. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Why I always get emotional when I talk about this? I couldn't create any music. I couldn't. You need this. I was breastfeeding, so my baby was completely dependent on me at mm-hmm. the at the time. Uh, it was a moment where I had actually went mute because I couldn't find anything worth saying or worth speaking about. Oh God, I'm too gangster for this, <laughs> Angela. <laughs> it's okay. Damn but it. You know what? This is helpful for other people. Because this is real life. You know how many women go through postpartum depression? Some of them, unfortunately, can't even identify what's wrong. Yeah. Sometimes they're with somebody who has no idea what's happening with them. Yeah. So to be able to see some of these signs and know that it's nothing that, you know, to know what it is so that you know how to handle it, I think is important. Yeah, f- for sure. Because it was a new, unfamiliar space. I didn't experience that with my 13-year-old. I bounced right back. My body bounced back. My right. skin cleared up. I didn't have any issues i didn't feel sexy i didn't feel desired i was like tripping out on jay and he was oh jay was my rock he kept me sane <laughs> that's how you know that's real love though Sorry. that's the one for somebody yeah to be able because that's you know that's it's hard for him to have to deal with as yeah it's harder for you oh, obviously it was so hard. no but it was it affects it's everybody. fair to say yeah, yeah it's fair to say that it affects everybody because he that was his first time having to deal with postpartum too mm-hmm. it was a stranger in his house right <laughs> you know so to be able to be back in this creative space now with my album with wait there's more i'm just so appreciative which is why i opened up the album with glory because i yeah. had to give thank spiritual you spiritual recognition to <laughs> god for bringing me out of that well, I am so happy that I got to celebrate with you today on the day that your album you, is out. Ooh. Wait, there's more. And when we say wait, there's more, we mean the album is out right now. Yeah. We mean the wedding is not being planned, but it's going to happen. <laughs> you was a whole fiance. <laughs> All right. We mean Tyler Perry movies. We mean yeah. the Miss Pat show. Yeah. We mean like so many different things that you are so deserving of. So Thank congratulations you. on you. everything that you have going on right now. A beautiful family, a beautiful Thank spirit, you. beautiful voice. All of the things. A tour that's kicking off, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wait, there's more tour. Well, cheers to that. Cheers to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate you. Cheers. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Yee. And when we come back, of course, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my guy B Dot is here. I had a great time. I have a great time. It's nice when your friends are sitting here next to you at work. Oh shucks. Oh shucks. It's the only time I see B Dot now is when he comes <laughs> up here to guest host on Way Up with Yee. But honestly, I appreciate you. What you got going on, B Dot? Too, because I know the Rap Radar podcast. Yeah, we're working that out. That's the main focus right now. Getting okay. the Rap Radar podcast back up and running. We should be cooking maybe around the summertime. So stay yeah. tuned. Because I know it kills you when there's things you want to say oh, about man. what's going on. There's so much. But that's why I'm here. This is like my internship. So I'm getting my feet wet. Okay. All right. <laughs> Shut up. That's not true. Um, but thank you again to Anaya for joining us. Her album, Wait There's More, is out right now. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Ye. And, you know, shout out to everybody because it was amazing just being at the fight over the weekend and, and people knowing this show. And when people come up to me and say, I love your show. I love what it does. 
You know, Mano hit me the other day. Somebody had stopped him that works in the toll booth and oh, was wow. talking about how the show has helped her out so much. So I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Community outreach. Exactly. All right. And you guys, of course, because it's all about you, have the last word. I'm in a relationship, but my girl's a little shy, but I, I want to have a threesome. But I'm not sure how to approach her about it. Hey, my secret is that I fall in love with my husband each and every morning. This man wakes up at 4 o'clock every morning, gets to work, makes sure that me and my son's car is running immaculate. He makes sure that all the bills are paid. And the only thing that he has is that I am faithful, loyal, loving, and make sure that he has a home-cooked meal every day. He's amazing. Going way up, turn up, turn up. with Angela Yee.